Hello and welcome to another edition of Inventor's Quick Tips. Today we are discussing the topic of patent eligibility. There are certain things that cannot be patented and today we'll discuss a bit about how the US Patent Office decides what is and what is not eligible for patent protection. The section of US law referred to as 35 USC Code 101 covers what types of things are patent eligible. At a high level, here are some examples. Naturally occurring things, such as seashells and rocks, and abstract processes, such as multiplication and division. If you filed a patent application and received a 101 rejection, that means that the Patent Office considers your claim to contain subject matter that is ineligible for patent protection. I have some other videos that cover the basics of the 101 rejection, and I will put a link to those videos in the description. These types of rejections are very common these days in software patent applications. Patent applications involving software, and in particular, end-user software, such as what powers websites and apps. Now the information I'm going to present next comes from the Manual of Patent Examination Procedure often referred to as the MPEP or MPEP. It is basically a guidebook on how to interpret the patent rules, laws, and results of important court decisions. It is relied upon by both patent examiners and patent professionals, and it is available to the public at the link shown here, and I will also put this link in the video description. In particular, this section of the MPEP 2106.4 discusses this topic of abstract ideas in further detail. So if you want to learn more and dig into the details, you can check out that section. So now let's jump into some categories or reasons that the Patent Office might find claims to be ineligible. The first reason is if the claim is basically nothing more than a mathematical concept. The second reason is if it covers certain methods of organizing human activity. And if you're wondering what that means, we will cover some examples of it shortly. The third reason is mental processes. Is the claimed invention basically something that someone can do in their head? So let's take a look at the mathematical concepts. Here's an example of something that was considered ineligible based on being a mathematical concept a claim that recited a relationship between reaction rate and temperature in which the relationship can be expressed in the form of a formula. And that was the, basically the whole claim with nothing more in it to make it less abstract. In the next category, there are inventions pertaining to certain types of human activity that can trigger such a rejection. Let's take a look at some of the examples that the U.S. Patent Office lists. Fundamental economic principles or practices, including hedging, insurance, mitigating risk. Commercial or legal interactions, including agreements in the form of contracts, legal obligations, advertising, marketing or sales activities or behaviors, and business relations. Managing personal behavior or relationships or interactions between people including social activities, teaching, and following rules or instructions. So if you have an invention in one of these areas, this does not mean that you absolutely cannot obtain a patent, but it does mean that your claims will have to focus on specifics of your invention that would be patent eligible. The takeaway here is that if you have an invention in one of these areas shown here, it can be more challenging, but not impossible, to obtain a patent. Now let's take a look at a mental process example. So in this case, the patentee claimed a computer implemented system and a method for enabling borrowers to anonymously shop for loan packages offered by a plurality of lenders, comprising a database that stores loan package data from the lenders and a computer system providing an interface and a grading module. This case went before a court and the Federal Circuit, which is a court, determined that both the computer implemented system and method claims were directed to anonymous loan shopping, which was an abstract idea because it could be performed by humans without a computer. 
So one very important takeaway from the previous example, simply having a computer recited in the claim does not necessarily avoid a rejection based on mental processes. The previous claim recited things like computer implemented system, computer system, and a database, but that did not prevent a mental processes rejection because it was deemed that the steps this computer were doing could also be done without a computer at all. So where does this leave us? If you are pursuing a software invention, it is important to have an awareness of these issues. One thing I've heard said, if you do not apply for a patent, you are guaranteed not to get one. So with that, if you are pursuing a software invention, here are some considerations for the claims. Try to have claims that cannot be practically performed in the human mind. Avoid reliance on a formula in the claim. You want the claim to do more than just compute the formula. Be aware of the certain methods of organizing human activity. Recall the examples we discussed earlier, and if possible, keep the actual behavior out of the claim, even if the invention pertains to enforcing or encouraging such a behavior. Where possible, discuss in your application and have claims to any improvements in computer performance. And these can include computing something faster, as well as a reduction in resources such as power consumption, memory usage, and or network bandwidth usage. The patent office and courts have recently considered such improvements to be patent eligible. So I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please share, subscribe, and like, and thank you so much for watching.